Hi everyone, how's it going? It's been a little bit, and so I thought that I come here and uh, do a little life update. And so, um, first things first, I finally got my green card. So, woohoo, good news. Uh, it's, I got my green card about a month and a half to two months ago. Right after the interview, I started looking for a job, and so it's been a very intense job search process for the past one month and a half to two months. Thankfully, I've gotten a couple offers where I could choose what worked for me, and so I am good right now. It, I would say that now that I have a green card, the process of finding a job is definitely way different when I was needing a sponsorship for my H-1B visa. Um, if you are or anybody who's looking for an H-1B visa, I totally understand the pain. During the time I was looking for a job, it was also summertime, and so we spent a little time go, going to some local places and just um, enjoying our summer. And we also didn't want to spend too much money when I didn't really have any income. And so that's, that's something fun and positive. But on the flip side, there are also things happening starting around April. Uh, when my grandma broke her wrist and um, since then she has been in and out of the hospital quite a lot and you know it's it's been worrisome and um, but she's good now I think she's stable I think one of the hardest thing for immigrants like us is that distance from your family uh, distance from your home country uh, makes it hard also like the cost the time difference the um, having to take time off just to visit back, you know, um, adjusting the time zone. It already posed a certain level of stress and, and difficulty. During the waiting period of my green car, I was also very restricted and I couldn't really go in and out of the country. It was harder for me, but I'm glad that grandma is doing better now. And hopefully uh, I will be able to visit back soon. And I'm sure you probably have seen the thumbnail and are curious about uh, what's happening. And that's another thing that really had happened quite quite a major event uh, during the summertime, during August. This one night, I was looking through our line chat, our family line chat. I saw something about a heart attack. And originally I thought it was grandma, but then I realized the chat was from my small family, like uh, my mom, Peter, Alvin and I and basically Alvin was mentioning heart attacks and I, I realized it was he was talking about Peter essentially Peter had an arrhythmia during his sleep and fortunately his girlfriend was there right next to him when it happened he was breathing really really hard on, when he was sleeping and then all of a sudden his breath just start going really shallow and then he stopped breathing eventually. So she called the ambulance and she had to do CPR on him. And what was really interesting about um, the whole thing was his girlfriend just had a CPR lesson or training uh, a, a few days before. And also a couple of days before he visited his girlfriend, he was visiting my mom. If he had been in my mom's house, then my mom would have noticed him having a problem because he would have his door shut. And so he would probably have passed right away. But because he was with his girlfriend, she was able to give him CPR, call the ambulance, and the ambulance took him to the hospital. By the time he, went, he got to the hospital, his heart completely stopped and there was no breathing. And so they had to shock him back to life. When my mom got to the hospital, the doctor basically told her that Peter had died once and then he was, he, he now he's back to life. Um, and mom was telling me that at first Peter was really, he wasn't really thinking straight. He, he couldn't remember where he was and he kept asking the same question, um, like where he was, what had happened. So imagine you're sleeping and next thing you know, you're just in the hospital. That's basically what happened to him. He didn't remember anything else. The last thing he remembered was he just went to bed. And then, so they had to do some examination on him. They found out it was the Brugada syndrome. It is a rare, but potentially life-threatening arrhythmia. And it is a syndrome most commonly found in the Southeast Asian 
population. Um, male has more chances of getting it than female, about seven times, I believe. And statistically, two patients out of 10 have this because of genetic causes. For Peter, um, we're still really trying to find out whether he has this because of genetic causes, because if he does, then that means both Alvin and I also will have to get checked, including my mom as well. All of this happened all of a sudden and he's fine now. He's under medication. He also had a surgery to install a implantable cardioverter defibrillator. And he said that he could, they, they would install it on the less used hand. And so he's a left-handed, so he, they installed it on his right hand right and chest right right below his collarbone and this isn't really the story that i'm expecting myself to be telling and honestly it also makes me think and put myself in his shoes if one day i wake up and i'm dead will i be happy will i be satisfied with what i have done um, in my life so far to up to this point it really makes me want to live life more. We all probably have experienced more of that kind of thought after the pandemic hit, after we started working from home. I mean, not everybody has that luxury, but there is more awareness in terms of living the now and work is not your life, that kind of mentality. But to me, this particular incident had really hit me in a different level. And now Peter, because of he has his defibrillator installed, he's considered a, a disabled person um, because um, there will be certain like physical activity restrictions and he will not be able to do any push-ups. If that would have happened to me, it means taking away certain things that I will care about a lot. Like I love weightlifting. And so what does that mean for me? But at the same time, um, it also makes me cherish the people around me even more. Um, I couldn't have imagined that if I had lost my brother because it would, yeah, I couldn't imagine it. So I'm glad that he's fine now. Peter is a fighter and he is, he's very strong. And so I'm very proud of him for that. And I hope that by telling this story, um, it also encourages you to live your life. And if you think about what you have done and maybe change the ways if you're not happy with your life right now. With the channel that I'm creating, um, one of the things that is really strong in my head is that our life is ours to create. And so I do hope that all of us are learning from lessons like this and growing from it. And um, yeah, that's it. That, those are my big life event updates. <laughs> For what's coming up, I'm looking to make more videos. I have a couple of videos that I wanted to make on our green card um, application and interview experience. And um, there will be more content coming soon, I promise. It's just taking a little bit of time with everything that's happening in my life right now. Um, and because I'm not making money um, off of YouTube right now, and so um, this is definitely something that I, I have to put my heart into and put my time into. So thank you for the patience, and that's it. I thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. I love you all. Stay well, stay, he stay healthy, and live your life, create your life. I hope the best for all of you, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.